My name is Liana and this is my first time here at Redcon 1 gym. I'm one of Redcon 1's athletes and today we are actually going to be training leg day. So I'm super excited to be here, super excited to be training legs here in Boca Raton, Florida. Honestly, pictures don't do justice on this place. This place is freaking amazing. Like the equipment here, the lighting, kind of on like gym nerd cloud nine right now. Stay light and then work up to that weight until you can master the form. To master the form, then move up in weight. Because a lot of people will have these really quad dominant or lower back dominant physiques, and that's just because they don't pelvic tilt into the pad. That's something super, super important. And I've actually never used this exact machine before, so I'm gonna have to mess around with it a little bit. And uh, then we're gonna do some hamstrings. I'm gonna go down in weight, and I'm gonna do isolating unilateral work. So what that means, um, and what I'll show you guys, is I'm gonna bring both my legs up during the eccentric movement, then bring it down to one leg and do the eccentric, the, so the time under tension going down and the squeeze with only one leg. So we're gonna be alternating that, just so we can do the concentric with both legs and eccentric with one leg. And that part is really gonna help develop the hamstrings, like whether that be strength or just um, for physical appearance or whatever that may be. This is like borderline too light. <laughs> but I know if I go up anymore, it's gonna be way too heavy. So I'd rather stay lighter and just really focus on the squeeze and do more reps than like go heavy and potentially like dip or like hurt myself in a negative way. So we're gonna do one more here. If I need to do extra reps, I will do extra reps. go for like 10 to 15 on these I would consider this one is the previous one a warm-up so I'd be like okay yeah I'm all good now now this is time to add more weight this is where it's gonna get harder and heavier I'm gonna do one more working set here and then I'm actually gonna do a drop set with myself, you don't need a lifting partner to do a drop set. All you do is you just run to one side, you take off the weight, then you run to the other side, take off the weight. Um, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try to move my knee at the same alignment as my shoulder or slightly behind. Because if I go inwards, that's just gonna, you're gonna tear your MCL and you're gonna like impinge your hip. If you go out too much, I mean, you're gonna tear your groin or something, something worse. So you wanna just make sure that you're pushing slightly out, like more towards where your shoulder is. Wanna angle it towards your shoulder. this leg so obviously what you do to one side you have to do the other unilateral work it was do the same thing to both sides same weight same number intensity same reps like or else you're just gonna have an imbalance and even if you're already having an imbalance and you're doing work to try to correct that imbalance you still want to do the exact same thing because like let's say my left arm is weaker than my right arm right um, if my right arm can curl 25 for 10 reps but my left arm can only curl 25 for six reps why would I do 10 and 6? That's going to continue the imbalance. So what I'm going to want to do is probably go down. Do 10 at 20 pounds on my left arm, 10 at 20 pounds on my right arm. Like 
every day I just wake up and I just feel so blessed to be part of something this big. You know, because I never thought getting into this that actually becomes something. I just, I just started lifting because I know that's something I needed to do in order to get healthy. Like, with the amount of injuries I've had, um, with, I was like, guess some of the emotional stuff I've been through, I just use lifting as a refuge, a safe place for me. I never once thought that I would get this far and I never thought that something, some, and a company as achievable and as great as Redcon One would want someone like me. Like I just, whenever I lifted, I just felt like another girl in the gym, not like the girl in the gym. Never thought I was gonna be the figure gal, or like the next big deal in bodybuilding, but that's what's, that's what it's turning out to be. And honestly, I, I couldn't be more blessed, more honored, more proud of myself, and happier to be a part of Redcon One and the Redcon One family. Like, it's, it's something I dreamed of, but I never thought it would actually be a reality. And then of course, we do swim to one side, we have to do it to the other. genetic. With that being said, you should still train your calves, not only for ankle mobility, um, but also for aesthetics, and it evens out your body. If you have some big ass quads and some tiny calves, you just look out of proportion, you look whack, and you look like, like a GMO Gumby. It's important to fully go into plantar flexion. Plantar flexion is like this, when you had your toe planted. And it's important to also go into full dorsiflexion. Dorsiflexion is when you're pulling your toes down to your knees. A common uh, error that people do in a lot of dorsiflexion movements is they lock their knees. You never, ever, ever want to lock your knees when you're lifting. Uh, you want to make sure your knees are slightly bent or straight but not locked. So when you're doing plantar flexion and dorsiflexion, you want to make sure you're fully stretching out your ankles, but you're not planting. It's important to stay, spend time at the bottom and fully feel that stretch. It's not that important to go super, super, super heavy. Because then again, you have no one to impress at the gym besides yourself. So, you can, um, if you do them correctly, you might be able to feel it in your glutes a little bit too. That's just because your ankles, actually your entire leg structure, feeds into one another. Just like any other structure in the body. So if you do it correctly, you should be able to feel a slight stretch in your glutes as well. Just because of a pull on your hamstring, which is going to be a pull on your gastrocnemius, which is part of your calf muscles. So, with all that said and done, let's add some weight. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a set of 60. So I'm gonna be doing 20 um, with my feet parallel, 20 with my toes pointed out, 20 with my toes pointed in. This is mostly just for ankle mobility and strength. I'm not doing this to get some honking calves, even though I would love some honking calves. I'm doing this more just for strength and mobility. Calves are one of those muscles that you, it is easier to tear. So it is good if you're feeling tightness in an uncomfortable manner to take a little bit of a rest and then get back into it. So we're doing 30, 10 neutral, 10 knees in, 10 knees out. So I call these the good girls of calves. It's because your knees point in. So good girls, and then you got bad girls. Good girls. Girls. And then you got the neutral girl. That's like the kind of burn you can only get from doing full range of motion. Like that's the good kind of burn. Like, whew. it's like acid reflex in your muscle fibers. <laughs> All right, what is up, y'all? We just finished a juicy leg day. We got a great pump, got a lot of hypertrophy work in. We also got some strength work in. Uh, we started with unilateral hamstring curls. Then from there, we went to a hack squat. After a hack squat, we did a superset between um, Smith machine front squats and unilateral leg press. Then from there, we did some calves. Uh, this is gonna be off camera, but I'm gonna do this because I'm also gonna be doing some hypertrophy work, some stretching, and some other things um, just for my health. But stay tuned, 
because tomorrow I'm about to get destroyed in a good way by Kai Green. We're gonna hit a great push day. I'm super, super, super excited. Looked up to this dude since, honestly, since I started my lifting career. So it's gonna be great. So happy to be here at Red Hole One Facilities and uh, stay tuned and uh, keep lifting.